Hi folks, Brother Steve Littleton with Gibson Baptist Church here. Just wanted to drop in for our Wednesday night Bible study tonight and to share a little bit about this upcoming holiday that we're about to celebrate. But before we do, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together tonight to study your word. We're thankful for the God that you are, for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Father, whether we deserve them or not, Lord, we know that we don't deserve anything that you give us, but you choose to give that to us anyway. And God, we're so thankful for that, that you love us enough, that you more than give us what we need. Father, tonight as we enter this study of your word, we pray that you would just speak to us in a whole new way. Tell us what we need to know tonight, God. Bless us and bless the reading of your word. May it bring us insight. May it bring us wisdom. May it encourage us to keep pressing on, God, to live the lives that you want us to live for you. We give praise and thanks in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, we live in a great nation. God has blessed us dramatically. God has more than blessed us. But even in this great nation that God has blessed us with, sometimes and many times, often we forget to be grateful for what God has done. We fail to give thanks. We fail to recognize that even the things that we take for granted should cause us to praise our creator. As a nation, we set aside one particular day to be thankful. Next week, we're going to celebrate this holiday that we call Thanksgiving. But tonight, what I want us to think about is what Thanksgiving is in a study that's titled, Give Thanks. If you have your copy of God's Word, turn with me to Psalm 100. Psalm 100, 1 through 5 is where we're going to be. Psalm 100, it is a psalm of thanksgiving. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible tonight, and God's Word says this in Psalm 100, verse 1. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. His people, the sheep of his pasture, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. Thanksgiving is something that should not be confined only 24 hours. It shouldn't be confined to a week or even a month. It's a, it's a season of life. A whole season that God has given us. Think about it this way. Our hearts should be continuously giving thanks for God's provision. That's a big word for just saying that God provides for everything that we need. God has always been faithful to give me exactly what I needed when I needed it. Now, many times we complain and we fuss because God hasn't answered our prayers and we're, we're frustrated because we've been praying so hard for something but it just didn't line up with God's will or God's timing. You see, God has answered our prayers. God is always on the case. He hears our prayers and he answers them. It's just our hearts may not be in the right place for us to receive that answer at that time. And we may not perceive the answer that he's given us as what he wants us to have. We want what we want instead of what God wants many times. But we should continuously be giving thanks for God's provision. Everything that we have in our possession, it belongs to God. It's not ours. It belongs to him. It's not really ours at all because God has blessed us with it to use and to use for his glory. You see, he's loaned us out all the things that we have for the purpose of bringing honor and glory to him gives you a different perspective when you look at it that way. 
We should be thankful for life. We should be thankful for breath and for sight. We should praise God for loving parents and family and friends. We should count our blessings for the church family we're a part of. We should thank God for salvation and for the privilege of being called his child when we pray to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Ephesians 5, 19 and 20 says this. In verse 19 of Ephesians 5, it says, Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, we, we see here that thanksgiving is something that we can pass on to others. It's an attitude to be shared with one another. There's a satisfaction that comes with thanksgiving. Like what we read about in Philippians 4 verse 6 when it says, Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You see, when we're not focused on worry, but instead we're focused on giving thanks for how God has answered, we enjoy an abundant harvest of God's blessings. When we are ready to accept the answer, no matter what it is, good or bad, whether it's what we want or whether it's what God wants, we're, when we're willing to accept his answer as what's best for us, then we can enjoy that abundant harvest of God's blessings. We become more aware of what God's doing in our lives and, and all around us. Why? It's because we're looking for it. We're paying attention to it. We're, we're looking for God to be moving and, and breathing life into our lives, moving and working all around us instead of defaulting to the old pessimistic outlook of being the Debbie Downer. You see, Thanksgiving is also something else. It's a time of celebration. We gather around with family and friends around the table. We have a great visit with family that maybe we haven't seen in a long time. We get that turkey out. We get the dressing and the cranberry sauce and all the sides, sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes and gravy. And I got to quit talking about it. I'm getting hungry. But anyway, it is a good time. It is a celebratory time of coming together, of relaxing together, of hitting the pause button. Some folks are using it, getting ready for Black Friday shopping the next day, but some folks are watching football together or parades on TV. But, you know, this year, it just might look a little bit differently because of a virus that's running rampant in our country. But folks, never fear. We should not look at the negative side of this pandemic. Instead, we should allow it to help us think about new ways of celebrating what's really important. To slow down even more and to give thanks for God's patience in dealing with us as a nation, in dealing with us as people, and for his love for us in sending a Savior to bring us eternal life. Listen to these words, Colossians 3, 15 through 17 says, And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called, <clears throat> excuse me, in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You see, in all things, we're to give thanks. Even if we're not able to do things the way we've always done them. Even if it's, if it's a miserable time that we're living in right now, through uncertainty and through sickness and through pain and loss of loved ones and loss of friends and, and all of this. I heard it said one time that the seven words that sum up a dying church and a stagnant Christian are the same. They're these. We've never done it this way before. Folks, we have a challenge ahead of us 
to figure out what God wants to teach us through all of this pandemic, through everything that's going on. We have an awesome opportunity to take God by the hand and allow him to show us something we've never seen before. It just might be that God is wanting us to think outside the box for new ways of being thankful this year, new ways of serving him, new ways of bringing honor and glory to him. Thanksgiving is a time to put our Savior, Jesus Christ, on display for the whole world. We often, though, think more about Christmas as being the focal point for exalting Jesus. But what better time than Thanksgiving is there to be thankful for the salvation that Jesus made possible on the cross? You see, we forget about Thanksgiving as a country a lot of times you look at our retail stores, they, they jump immediately from Halloween has just about replaced Thanksgiving. Now you jump from October to December and they forget about November in there. They forget about Thanksgiving. It, the window is getting smaller and smaller every year. And there's nothing wrong with Christmas with Jesus being the focus at Christmas. He is, but Jesus should be the focus at Thanksgiving too, because we have the greatest of all gifts to be thankful for at Christmas and Thanksgiving. We're to be thankful year round, but we have an opportunity to pause, to get ready for Christmas during this Thanksgiving time, to remember the, the baby that was born in the manger becomes the savior who dies on the cross and brings eternal life to those who put their faith and their trust in him. You see, those who have surrendered to Jesus, they've been delivered from the punishment of sin. We, we've been rescued from Satan's grasp and from his powers. We've been given God's word that's chock full of precious promises to give us power and encouragement to keep pressing on. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says this, Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That first part says, Give thanks in everything. That's good. That's bad. That's ugly. It's everything. Give thanks. Thanks. Finally, this evening, I want you to see something else here. Look with me to Revelation 7, verse 12. Revelation 7, 12, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Folks, this verse shows us the example that the angels are setting for us. The angels surrounding the throne of God. The angels that are there welcoming Jesus, welcoming God's overcoming king. The one who died to set us free. One of these days, we're going to join in the chorus of singing that says all blessing and honor and glory and power belongs to our great King Jesus. To be part of that, it's required that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to have prayed to receive him, to repent of your sin, to turn from your sin and turn toward Jesus and ask him to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sin, to be the Lord and boss of your life and then start living for him. So I encourage you this year, set aside everything else and focus on what God has done, focus on what he's doing, and focus on what he's about to do in your life. From my family to yours, I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, not just next week, not just for now, 
but thanksgiving every day. For, for every day that you have living with Jesus is a day to be thankful for. I have good friends that use the phrase upright and self-ventilated. Whenever I can say that I'm upright and self-ventilated, I have something to be thankful for. Well, guess what? Even if I'm not, even if I'm not in 100% health, I still have something to be thankful for. And that is that there's a God that knows me. There's a God who created me. There's a God who loves me. And there's a God that loves you as well who gave his son to down a cruel Roman cross so that you could spend eternity with him. Friends, do you know him this year? Do you know him as Lord and Savior? If you haven't, when you pray to receive him as Lord and Savior, you have something totally new to be thankful for. It's called spiritual freedom. It's called salvation. It's called redemption. So happy Thanksgiving in advance. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I encourage you to reach out to me and let's talk about it. Let me introduce you to the Savior that I've been talking about tonight. For those of you that know him already, share it with somebody else. Share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world around you so that they too can know this Jesus. Happy Thanksgiving. Give thanks. And may God bless you all abundantly.